In SketchUp Pro 2022, we've got a new search feature, a lasso tool, tag tool, upgraded freehand tool, tangent inference lock, scene search, and more in SketchUp alone. I'm actually going to do a review of all the new layout features in a separate video, which I'll link to below and at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the new features in SketchUp Pro 2022. And by the way, I'll have each feature bookmarked in the video if you'd like to jump to a specific section. So the first one we're gonna look at is the new search feature. So there's a new icon up here in the getting started toolbar. You can also get the search feature by tapping shift S. That's the default uh, keyboard shortcut to have this search feature uh, appear. And you can just type in different names of tools, different commands, settings, even extensions. If you have any extensions in installed. So I have the Ruby console installed here. Um, you know, if you had profile builder or whatever, you could type that in. Um, one thing that's kind of neat is you can search by name, but you can also search by context. So if you think of like extrude, you know, what, what would you look for? What tool would you look for if you're trying to extrude something? Be either the push pull tool or the follow me tool. Um, you could type in radius and it'll give you, you know, different, um, you know, arc, circle, rotate, uh, curve is another example. Now they're not, this isn't like artificial intelligence. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure this is all um, baked in. So there's not gonna be full coverage of all of the tools and commands. Um, for instance, import doesn't work for, you know, just like the file import command. It's just referring to Trimble Connect. So um, there's there's a little bit more to go, but this is a great way um, if you're not quite familiar with keyboard shortcuts, this is a great way to quickly pull up any tool you can think of. You know, maybe you want to draw a rectangle, rectangle tool, and then you can navigate using the arrow keys up and down and then tap enter to activate that command or tool or whatever it is. All right, the next tool is the lasso tool. So the lasso tool is a completely new selection tool that was added to SketchUp. And let me turn on X-Ray real quick. And it allows you to create this lasso type selection. So you can select things without having to do, you know, a square selection box with the, the traditional selection tool. So this is great for these sorts of situations where, you know, you can't, you can't really, you'd have to kind of uh, do this in two steps to select all of these faces. Whereas with the lasso tool, you can do it in one step. And you may have noticed it does have a different behavior depending on whether you uh, orbit or, or make the selection clockwise versus counterclockwise. So clockwise will select everything that is fully contained within the selection. So whatever's fully contained. So if I, you know, kind of crop through half of these, only the ones that are fully contained will be selected. Now the other option is going counterclockwise. And as long as the selection lasso is touching the object, it will become selected. So this is great for um, organic modeling, in my opinion, things like terrain, where you may want to create a, a, a certain type of selection like this, perhaps, where it wouldn't really be possible to make a square selection. I think this tool is, is really handy for that sort of thing. All right, the next tool we have is the tag tool. So this is a new tool that was introduced in 2022, and you can kind of think of it as a paint bucket tool, but for tags. So it allows you to click directly on objects and entities to apply tags to them. So you just select the tag that you'd like to apply by selecting it right in the tags panel. And then you grab the tag tool and then you click on the object you wanna apply that tag to. Now they've also moved the color by tag feature into its own icon here. So color by tag will temporarily uh, turn 
the faces and materials uh, that are applied in the model to represent the colors that are shown here next to uh, the tag. So it's a visual way to verify what tags are assigned to the different objects and entities in the model. Now the tag tool has some modifier keys. So you can sample the tag from another object by tapping Alt. So I can sample the pawn layer by, by tapping Alt and you know clicking on whichever, whichever object I wanna sample the tag from. And then from there, I can apply that tag um, to, to any other object. Now, another modifier key is the control key. So I have the pawn layer currently selected. If I hold down the or tap the control key and click on a component, all instances of that component will have that tag applied to it. Now, the thing that's really interesting is this works even if, if instances are nested in different contexts. So for instance, if I create a group here and we have this pawn out here, if I, if I grab the tag tool and tap control and apply that pawn tag to this pawn, all of these ones will change as well, even though they're nested within um, another, another group. And then finally, there's the shift key. So if you, let's say we grab the untagged tag and grab the tag tool, if we, if we tap the shift key, you can replace the tag of all entities within the active context that share a tag with the clicked entity. So if I click on uh, the castle here, all of these ones will change because they all share the same tag. So I can change all of those, I can change all of those. Now there, there are also a few bonus features that were added to the context menu in support of the new tag tool. So if you right click and go to select, you'll now see there's uh, select all with same tag. Now this was, I think there was something similar to this in the past, but it had to, it only worked on like loose entities. It didn't work on, on objects for some reason. Um, there's also select all instances. So you can select all instances of, of a component. And there's select all tagged um, if you actually right click on the tag itself, you can you can choose select all tagged and it'll select all those entities that are within the active context that have that tag applied. All right, next we have the upgraded freehand tool. So the old freehand tool was kind of jagged and unpredictable like this. And the, the new freehand tool is much smoother and you also have the ability to tap the control or alt keys to um, change the segmentation of the resulting curve that you've created. So I'm just tapping control here and you get this visual feedback with all these different points and tapping alt will add more segmentation to, to that as well. So big improvement with the freehand tool. The other thing is uh, when you were using the freehand tool previously, you could only draw along a single plane. But now the freehand tool can actually draw along, you know, multiple planes as you go along. And this is probably the worst example, <laughs> the worst example ever, but you can see how as I'm using the freehand tool across different planes, it'll actually allow you to do that. So in the past, it was basically just stuck to one plane, whichever plane you started on. Um, is, is what it would be stuck to. And speaking of planes, you also now have the ability to tap an arrow key to define a plane that you wanna draw on prior to drawing. So I just tap the left arrow key, and if I draw, it will be locked to that green axis plane. Um, up arrow key will be the blue axis, and red axis is the right arrow key. So several major improvements to the freehand tool. All right, the next feature is a new tangent lock feature. So this is a little tricky to explain, but I, I trust me, you'll understand when I show you here. So this is the old behavior or, or of what we're used to with, with how tangency works with um, the, the arc tool. So in order to get a tangent lock, you, you start the arc 
and it'll kind of automatically find tangent to uh, the, either the arc or the edge that you've you've started from. Um, and but in order to commit that tangent, you'd either have to double click, so one two, to get the uh, the arc drawn. But now to continue, you would have to start a new uh, a new arc from scratch. So you have to click again and then go from there. Uh, the other option is to click and then you know you can you can hover over the edge and and kind of search until you find tangency, which I think maybe I may not have clicked properly. So there we go. So the other option is you know click once and then you can just move the mouse to find that that tangency again and then click again to finish. So basically, in order to lock tangents, uh, lock a tangent, you would have to click multiple times and then the arc would finish and then you'd to continue, you'd have to click again and kind of start over. Now there's a feature and you can see it down below here if you look at the, the, status, um, the status bar at the bottom. When I start this arc, down here it says arrow keys, toggle, lock, inference, I'm sorry, the alt key, toggle, lock tangency. So if I tap the alt key, it now says locked to tangent. And so what this does is now I can just click once and it not only draws that arc at the tangent, it immediately enables me to continue drawing an additional arc um, to the tangent. So now I have just um, single clicks that I'm using to continue drawing arc tangents. So that is a probably overly complicated way to explain the new feature of tangent lock with the arc tool. And the last big SketchUp feature is searchable scenes. So if you've ever had a large model with a huge list of scenes, you know how hard it can be to navigate and find the scene you're looking for. So they've added this new search feature uh, up here next to the tabs. You're not gonna see it at first if you have no scenes in the model, but once you add scenes, you'll see this up here. You click on it, you can type in a keyword or you know a few letters and it'll filter down the list of scenes for you to click and activate um, th the scene that you want. So it's it's a way to you know get to your scenes faster. It's not folders, unfortunately. You know, we, we did get folders with tags. It would have been cool to see that with scenes, but this does help a little bit with, you know, finding which scenes you need to get to. Now, there are a ton of additional improvements and performance upgrades that have been made to SketchUp. I'm gonna go over a few of them here, and then I will link to the uh, release notes in the description if you wanna learn more. Um, but some of these I think are pretty cool that I, I'd like to mention here. So the first one being the section plane improvements. So in the past, if you've had a, a lot of section planes like this in your model, um, it was really hard to interact with the objects in your model because if you tried to click, it would actually select the section plane um, and instead of the object you're trying to click on. So you'd be forced to come up here and turn off the display of section planes in order to interact with your model. But now, you know, they kind of realize like that's not really necessary because, you know, you can always come over here and click on uh, a section plane on the edge in order to select it. But now they've made it so the plane itself is not a selection surface. So I can come in here and interact with the model and without worrying about activating a section plane. So that's really cool. We also have a big improvement over the clipping problem. If you've ever experienced your model kind of disappearing, um, that's a clipping, the clipping plane problem with the camera. And so they've made a lot of improvements to that. This is something that's been in SketchUp for so many years. So it seems like they finally have that fixed. Standard views will now respect the model axes. If you, uh, in previous versions, SketchUp the standard views like front, left, right, back would respect the kind of global axis before you change it. So if you change the axes in the model, the standard views wouldn't update to 
um, orient to that new axis orientation. So now standard views will um, respect that if you do have a custom axis. We also have some tape measure tweaks here, directional inference tool tips, and a few other improvements here. Like I said, I will have the sh uh, show notes, the <laughs> release notes in the description below. And don't forget to check out my next video uh, that goes over all of the layout improvements. And lastly, I want to remind you about my book, SketchUp to Layout, Second Edition, the beginner's guide to SketchUp Pro and Layout. I have it in ebook format and paperback. I have a, I have a warehouse in California, same day shipping if you order uh, the paperback to the, to the US and uh, we do ship internationally. But if you're trying to learn SketchUp and Layout, this book will cover everything you need to know to go from not knowing anything about 3D modeling to having full control over your 3D models and bringing it into layout and, and you know creating construction documents. So I'll have a link to this book um, in the description as well if you wanna check it out. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.